Hello YouTube, my name is Joanna B and welcome back to another episode of my Survivor Review. So we are finally at that pivotal moment in Survivor and that is the merge. We are finally at merge time, we are a tribe of 13 and right away things are already getting heated up. So first off, Dawn makes a little speech about everyone playing hard and that this is gonna just be, I guess in a sense like just play it like Survivor. I guess, and part of me's like, I mean, is this really out of the goodness of your heart, Dom, or are you trying to do this to like, goad pe you know, like just goad people, I don't even know if that's the right word, but try to egg people on, and all that sort of thing, so I thought that was kind of bizarre. So obviously during merge time, they have a big merge feast, they get new buffs, and the tribe buff color this year is black, which I feel like is kind of suiting since it is Ghost Island, since it's very dark and mysterious. Um, speaking of the buffs, Chris's new buff actually had a little surprise in it. Turns out it was a clue to go to the uh, tree mail and see if they, he can find anything. And then he finds out that there is actually a hidden immunity idol, but it's not a camp. It's actually on Ghost Island. So Chris has to decide if he's willing to take the risk to leave to go to Ghost Island, quickly get the hidden immunity idol, and then come back without anyone suspecting that he's been gone. He decides to take that. Kind of, we already know that Chris is very much like a risk-taking type of a person, not just from him saying it a million times in this episode, but from the beginning of the competition, he's a guy who likes to take risk. So obviously he's gonna say yes to that. And also another question, we did see a little moment with Dom, Wendell, uh, Kellen, and Chelsea all talking together, and they're really thinking about doing Navidi strong still, which I still find to this I still find annoying. But will the whole Dom versus Chris situation get in the way of that Navidi vote? So trying to possibly make some advantage moves, I'm not too sure how to describe it. Uh, Dom and Wendell decide to talk to Chris and Chris is, just, is not having it. He already knows that Dom has lied to him once and that he's a strong player, he's here to play the game. So there's no way that Chris is gonna at all work with Dom or Wendell. So that was kind of a failed attempt on their part. And I don't even know really if that was even something that they needed to do. I guess maybe it was just an option that they wanted to try out. If it didn't work, then so be it. But I mean, that was just kind of a dumb move. Wouldn't you think that Chris would not work with you? So that night, the boat comes to pick Chris up. They take him to Ghost Island. And Ghost Island at night looks really, really similar to Tribal Council. Um, there's also a season, and I can't remember what it was, but they did like a challenge, and I can't remember if it was reward or immunity. They did a challenge at night, and I cannot remember for the life of me what season it was. I want to say it was a season that had poverty on it. So it was either, um, and it was an early season. So I, it's got to be Cook Islands or Micronesia or somewhere in the, in the older, older days of Survivor. But it looked really, really cool. So Chris gets to Ghost Island. He goes through the main, the, the main stairs and all that sort of stuff. And right in front of him, there is a table and there are eight bamboo little, um, cubby, not cubby, but like holder things, like what we'll be seeing a lot on Ghost Island. And there's a note first that says he has won the Hidden Beauty Idol that belonged to JT in Game Changers, which he, as I've mentioned in my Game Changers review myself, he did not play and he got voted out that same night. So that in itself is curse. But it actually only works at the next tribal council, unless Chris is willing to make a possible risk and sacrifice. At the risk of losing his vote, he can keep drawing from these bamboo and try to add extra tribal councils onto that immunity idol. So he decides to take this, at, even though he knows that if he picks the wrong bamboo that has a, that has a note saying he can't vote, even though he has to risk lo losing his vote if he picks it from the bamboo. So he picks the first one and it does, and he ends up picking a good bamboo. It adds a day onto his uh, immunity idol, but then his luck runs out right there because the next one he, he picks, it's the no vote. So Chris cannot vote at this tribal council. Honestly, if it were me, I probably would have taken maybe, you know what, I probably would have done the same thing as Chris, but I, I don't know, because like now that I know the outcome, it's like, well, obviously I wasn't gonna, I was gonna pick more than one, but I think in that situation, I probably would have gone for maybe two or three. So I probably would have done the same exact thing that Chris did, 
but I may, but maybe I would have picked from one row only, not like alternate. I don't know. It's like now since I know the end result, it's kind of hard for me to really pick an option I would choose because of, it clouds like what I would say. So back at camp, uh, Chris, obviously being that he was at Ghost Island all night, he of course is tired, a little cranky, and he starts getting on people's nerves. In particular, Dom, which obviously, because that's been the whole point, it's like, it's like Chris and Dom just buttoned heads, no getting around to it. It's just like, like Wendell said, it's like Survivor's version of a Cold War. Anything, like someone can drop a bomb and just blow this whole thing up. So it's like, of course, Dom is going to get annoyed with Chris, and Chris is going to get annoyed with Dom. It's just kind of how it goes. So at one point, after Dom talks to Jenna and Libby, they actually decide maybe it's smart to go with Chris, because Chris is someone who they suspect is someone who's not going to lie to them as much as Dom would, which honestly, I do find that to be true, but also I find Chris to be very unreliable. He tends to run his mouth quite a bit he wants to be like in charge he wants to be the leader and that in itself is a bad thing dom has that too but i feel like it's more po it's more prevalent with chris compared to dom so we get to the first individual immunity challenge and a very difficult challenge and kellen ends up being the first person to win individual immunity on in survivor ghost island and on the chopping block we have dom we have chris then we have Libby, and then we have Wendell. So we've got a lot of names to choose from here, and obviously the big focus is on, if it, is it gonna be Dom, or is it gonna be Chris? Or could it possibly, possibly be a new alliance could form and get someone else out who's not the two? And uh, we get back to camp, and uh, Chris decides to do something rather interesting. He decides to take everyone to the water well, except for Dom and Wendell, need I add, and tells them that they need to get Dom or Wendell out. They need to split the votes, and if Dom plays his idol, which Chris already knows he has, then it's a, it's a no-brainer that one of the two of them is gonna go home. Now, obviously, it is a good plan. Even Michael makes the point that it is a good plan. However, is first off, is Chris telling the truth? And are other people not going to jump on board because they either don't want to work with Chris or do they want to get someone else out and they don't want to even work with him? Then after this whole conversation, Donathan goes to Dom and spills Chris's plan, which I would figure Dom already kind of figured. And then Wendell goes to Sebastian, uh, Libby and Jenna tries to talk to them about to get Chris out that this is a priority. They need to do this. Wait, and then the, he describes it as like, we don't need a dictatorship. Uh, technically, aren't you an alliance technically of a slight dictatorship? So I feel like if you're thinking about it on that respect, it's like, it's like not gonna work because it's kind of one and the same. Later on, like I predicted pretty much from uh, last episode, there are a couple of people who don't want to go along with this whole Dom versus Chris thing. And actually, it was Kellen, Angela, Chelsea, and Desiree who get together and say, maybe we should get still go for Malolos, just have the Navidi women go ahead and bring break down old Malolo. And and the grants and their and their target is Libby, need I add. Um, I'm just so sick and tired, and granted, I understand that these are people that you started out with, but the fact being that it's still so prevalent in this game, still, I find it so confusing. I'm just like, it, wouldn't this be your opportunity to like expand and work with different people, not just the people that you started off with? Because I'm getting sick and tired of the whole Navidi, Malolo thing, da 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 And I understand that Libby is a threat. We did learn in this week's episode that Libby is strong in challenges. So that adds something to her and she is a threat. However, I'm just sick and tired of them saying we need to get old Malolo out. Because once, I mean, there, well, there's what, technically... I mean, technically there's, there's old Malolo, like Laurel and Donathan, but now they're inter intertwined with Navidi in some respects. So we have Jenna, Libby, and Michael. And I mean, once that's gone, what do you have? I mean, who else are you going to start targeting here? So it's just like, sooner or later, this whole thing is just gonna crash down and it's not gonna work. So I don't know, I'm just waiting for that moment to happen because I'm sick and tired of hearing it still. Right before Tribal Council, we have another conversation with Dom and Wendell. And Dom, which I for completely forgot about, uh, until I, till this point in the episode, that Dom 
that right now we are in the top 13. So Dom can use his legacy advantage tonight, or he can save it for top six. So not only does he have the legacy advantage to use right now, tonight, but he can also still use his hidden immunity idol, which he still has. So it's still like, I have no idea, like, he has so much power at this point. Plus, Wentnil still has his idol. It's like, there's so much power between the two of them that he, that basically we pretty much knew from the get-go that Dom was not going home that night. Now we are, now we are at Tribal Council and a little bit into it and then Dom brings up the rivalry between him and Chris and he decides to bring out his fake idol and wear it around his neck. I really just don't know if playing the fake idol was meant to be for show. I think because he ends up playing his legacy advantage, because this is gonna help me explain this. Um, he does play his legacy advantage while he still has this thing around his neck. So, did he do this to derail the fact that he has a real idol? Or is he just doing this for show? I really don't know. Like the whole fake idol thing, it's kind of gotten confusing. Like it made sense at the time he it semi made sense at the time that he did it in the beginning to show to Chris when they were first on Navidi together. But I'm just like, I'm confused as to what he's gonna do with that in the future. Because now we on he only has one idol left. So it's like, are you gonna try to pretend you don't have it, that that was a fake and that I've never had one to begin with, da 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 da. I'm just like, I'm very confused. I need him to explain this to me, hopefully next episode. We get, we get to the vote and also Wendell has a very, uh, Slightly cringy, in my opinion, but yet funny uh, little confessional where he's like saying to, to Chris, stop rapping, and he keeps on like, you know, put the pen down, put the paper down, stuff like that. Just like, it kind of went on for a little too long. If he had just done like one, like one or two punchlines, I would have been okay, but then he kept going on and on and on. I'm like, okay, Wendell, we get your point. You need to stop. And like I said earlier, Dom just plays legacy advantage, although he makes it build up to that he's gonna play the idol that's around his neck plays the advantage, and he did not get any votes. He and Wendell did not get any votes. Turns out it was two votes to Libby, and yes, the rest went to Chris. So Chris is now the eighth person voted out of Survivor Ghost Island, and he becomes the first member of our jury. I'm literally that whole time, I'm just like, Chris is just being so stupid. He had an idol in his pocket. You know that you're on the chopping block, and like, why did you not take Dom's follow Dom's lead and play your idol. You had an idol. It was good for, it was only gonna be worthy for two days. Why not play it? It's just, oh my God. I wanted to just like slap him silly. Cause I'm like, dude, you should have played the thing. Cause you did not reverse JT's curse on that idol. If they ever do something like this again, and if they bring that same idol back, I swear to God, everyone, anyone who comes into contact with it is gonna be like, don't even want to touch it. Don't even want anything to do with it. Take this thing back. Can I get a refund on this idol? I was just, I literally was just like, it was just so stupid. So stupid. Ugh. So moving on to next week, we have Laurel, who is going to get very, very, um, in a way, confrontational with Wendell and Dom since she's been in an alliance with them for a while. Now, Wendell spills the beans to Laurel that he has an idol as well, plus maybe she already knows that Dom has the idol. I think she does, if I recall. So this is going to make Laurel very hesitant about working with them in the future. And I wonder, is she going to try to get Donathan out of this as well? So that it's just Dom and Wendell by themselves? Because that could possibly work since Donathan has been very loyal to Laurel. Um, I'm very uh, intrigued to see how that's going to turn out. We have a new target for Dom and Wendell to some extent because they're still targeting other people like Libby. I think Michael's also on their radar because he's now become, now that Chris is gone, I feel like he's the next like alpha male or powerful male player, so so to speak, and that he's someone that they need to get rid of. And then uh, next week, probably my least favorite uh, immunity challenge, or it could be reward, I'm not too sure. It's the eating challenge. And I hate the eating challenge so, so much. It is just so, it's just so gross. I hate seeing people eat like, n like non, I don't want to say non-civilized because that makes it sound bad, but like non foods we don't eat 
on the daily ba on a daily basis. You know what I mean? It's like like bugs, and I thought I saw eyeballs in the preview, and I'm just like, ugh. I mean, it just makes me cringe just thinking about it, and I'm not looking forward to it. Ugh. But that's gonna be next week, so we're gonna have to deal with it. So that is it for this week's review of Survivor. If you guys liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me comments down below. What did you think of the first episode with the Merge Tribe? And if you want to see my future videos or videos I've already done, go ahead, hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when my videos come out. That's all I have for you guys today. And until the next video, bye! Mwah.